Nathaniel Than Hartsock is the manager of Precision Ag Business Integration, Precision Ag Retrofit Intelligent Solutions Group at John Deere. Than has been with John Deere since 2001 and is currently the manager of the Precision Ag Business Integration, as I just stated. His career highlights include positions as manager of production system solutions in 2014, project manager of data enabled ag strategies 2013, national sales manager 2010, division sales manager 2009, and strategic marketing manager 2007. Than was deeply involved in the recent acquisition of Blue River Technology, led the creation of the Corn Production Systems Innovation CPSI team, and managed the relationship with John Deere dealers in Illinois. Than is a member of the American Society of Agronomy, a volunteer with Junior Achievement USA, and is an expert in business strategy, agronomy of execution, mergers and acquisitions, and managing through uncertainty. He received his bachelor's degree from Ohio State in agronomy, master's degree in soil science from the University of Kentucky, and MBA from the Kellogg School of Management in Northwestern University. Than enjoys hiking, riding bikes, and traveling with his wife and two children. He is engaged with his family's corn, soy, and wheat farm in South Central Ida, or Ohio. So with that, Than, it's all yours. First of all, good, after, or good morning, everyone. Usually folks mistake Ohio for Iowa, uh, but it makes sense given the forum that we're in and the meeting that Ohio got mistaken for Idaho uh, today. So uh, again, Than Hartsock with John Deere, pleased to be with you today, excited to uh, share with you a view, uh, an outlook, if you will, on technology. We had a good setup this morning from uh, Jesse on how technology is influencing global pro crop production. And essentially, I'm going to go a bit deeper and talk about some of the specific technological developments that are happening in our industry. Start things off. Uh, one of these trends that uh, has already been addressed by several of the speakers, I think that comes through clear when we talk to you all, is the opportunity or the need or the pressure you face around uh, finding skilled labor. And so as I talk about technology today, one of the things I would encourage you to do or ask you to do is, as I talk, highlight you know, the, the, the details about specific developments, think about how that technology can be used on your farm or in your operation to magnify or multiply the labor that you're putting in to raising that crop. In other words, can the technology be a, a, a lever, if you will, uh, for, this, for this trend of, of difficulty in finding labor? We talk a lot about labor and agriculture. The reason we talk about it is because it's a real trend. And, and the data, recent data here from the uh, uh, US Bureau of Labor Statistics shows what we all feel, which is there are fewer and fewer laborers or workers in agriculture over time. Uh, the plot here shows us the last 20 years. You can see the forecast uh, from 2014 to 2024 shows a continued decline of roughly 6% over that period. So again, what's this, what this calls out is the need, the opportunity, and what we see in, our, in the industry and in the part of the industry we participate in is to look for ways to technology to address this concern that you have and multiply or magnify the labor inputs you do put into your farm, the management inputs that many of you in this room as decision makers uh, act upon. So let's start with kind of a walkthrough of the technology landscape, if you will. So, the picture obviously shows a nice big green John Deere tractor. Probably not surprising, that's the, the type of tractor I chose to highlight in my slide. Um, as well as a nice green and yellow uh, cedar or planter behind the machine. Frankly though, I wanna call out that uh, many of the trends that I'm gonna talk about and the opportunities or developments are industry-wide. Now, I'll also highlight some of the areas where we're making specific investments, but in general, I wanna give you an outlook uh, for the technology overall. So let's start at the back of the machine, back of the implement, kind of where the action happens, right? When you make a pass every, cross, uh, every pass across the field to produce the crop, you do that to, to achieve some set of desired outcomes. Whether we, whether we always want to admit it or not, you don't own John Deere equipment just to own it, but you own it to get a job done. And so starting in the back at the implement, again, where the action happens, where the, where the input is placed in the, in, the, uh, in the ground, where the harvest occurs, we're seeing more and more sensors 
be installed and utilized that generate useful information. So if you think about historically, we've had sensors on implements, whether it's been planters uh, to count seeds, whether it's on sprayers or nutrient bars to, to monitor rate. That technology has been in place and it continues to evolve and become more precise. But what we're seeing in sensor technology uh, increasingly is the addition of more environmental type sensors. And when I say environmental, I mean very local environment, like sensors that can literally tell at the point of action where, where, the, where the implement intersects the soil, what's, what are the soil conditions? What are the, what are the, what's the local environment there at which we're placing seed or where we're placing nutrient? Also, uh, at John Deere, we actually, uh, the last several years, have added a weather station to sprayers as an option where not only sensing the soil characteristics locally at the time of applications or at the time of the pass of the field, but also what's the wind speed? What's the local environment at the time we're doing something in that field? What do we want to know about that point of, of time so that when we look back and we want to understand we made an application, but what were the real conditions in which we made it so that then we can determine if the outcome was good, was it because of some combination of conditions? Or if the outcome wasn't so good, was it also some uh, influence of those types of conditions? Lastly, on sensors on the back, as we're talking about uh, kind of the sensor proliferation, I also want you to, to be on the lookout and be aware of an emerging effect of what we in the industry call sensor fusion. What that means is, is at its essence, is it's the, the fusion or the combination of multiple sensor inputs at once to create a better outcome. An example of this is on our, on our uh, newest and most modern or advanced planters, we now have an inertial measurement unit, a gyroscope that can specifically tell the, the position of, of the implement, of the sprayer boom or of the planter. And because we use that, when you go around the curve, when you make a curve now with our latest sprayer, with our latest planter, we know precisely how fast each row unit is moving or each nozzle is moving. And what that allows us to do is with the appropriate amount of controls, now we can control rate, seeding rate, or application of the herbicide rate precisely at the nozzle, at the row, to compensate for speed. And that happens through the fusion of that inertial measurement unit, a gyroscope, the GPS sensor on the tractor so we know where we are in the world, speed, as well as the rate information that's in, in that machine. So sensors, you can tell, a lot of action there, a lot of expectation, more to come, if you will, but we're, we're really focused on sensors that really inform you about the quality of the job that's being done, done and, and how well the outcome is that's being achieved. Next, as we move forward on the, on, on, the, on the machine, you see the call out for communications technologies. I, I expect many of you realize that, that your machines are more often than not now being, or having included in them, wireless connectivity, meaning those me machines can be connected uh, to a cloud that, that, that makes it easier for you to know where those machines are, how they're being used, and then you being able to decide through that connectivity is there anybody else that you, as a manager, as an owner of that machine, would like to have access and visibility to that machine's information? For example, do you have other decision makers in the farm that should know where the machines are and how much work they've done and how much work remains? Would you like for your dealer to know where your machines are so he or she can provide better service if there is a problem or if, if there is scheduled maintenance? And so that, real t or that communications technology really underpins or creates a foundation, a backbone, by which then you can control access and visibility and then drive uh, a better experience. In the middle in the cab, you see we've got an arrow or a box pointing to real-time data. If you're the operator in the cab, you're the one who's in control of how well the job is being done. And so we, over time, have put displays and more and more advanced computers. We're now on our fourth generation a uh, computer in the cab, if you will, the command center, that's really the brain of the, of the internal system. And it's visualizing to you the sensor data from the back and, and often now is able to actually make recommendations like, you know, you sh based on these conditions, you should do this. You may want to consider going faster or going slower or making these adjustments because the outcome that you want to achieve with this operation will benefit from that action. 
I'm going to talk later about how we're making an investment in a technology called artificial intelligence, or specifically machine or deep learning, that really, truly is going to make a, a step change function in this, the intelligence of the brain of these machines. GPS is the next one. This is probably the one you're most familiar with because, quite frankly, this is one of the key foundational elements that drove the precision ag movement that started uh, in the early 90s. We had to know where we were on the world, in the world and where we were in that field so that we could start to site-specifically manage. We've seen big advancements here as well, as you all know, uh, moving from meter level accuracy down to centimeters. And now finally, uh, in the upper right, kind of uh, figuratively in the clouds, is the, the operation center, as we call it, or in general, cloud-based management systems that allow managers to not just have to be in the cab running the machine to know what's going on and how well the job's being performed, but now those same insights can be derived from the manager outside of the cab, through a mobile phone, through a tablet, to look at the real-time and summary operation uh, that's going on. So we pull this together and the way we think about delivering that type of technology, because we know we have to, we have to look at it as a solution, not just as, a, as, as an interesting piece of technology, but we look at the combination of the precision ag equipment, so the tractor, the implements, the harvester, plus the technology that I just talked about and that I get excited about, the, the evolution of the, of the sensors and the information, the connectivity, and then finally, the role that you and, and the value you receive from a dealer, from a support, and from a, st uh, a services standpoint. Now increasingly, J at John Deere, we're thinking more about how our, our value to you as farmers evolves through these types of technological or integrated solutions. And we're expanding how we think about we should offer value to you and how we, how we help you make your farms better. Historically, we've excelled at the top of this, of this visual, at, at providing you machines that are bigger, they're faster, they operate more quickly, and they're stronger, they're more reliable. This is, this is core to what we try to offer uh, in the John Deere uh, offering. That continues to be important. But increasingly, we're focused on making these things easier to use. We want to make them smarter, and we want to make them more precise. And so, like you and your operations, we're constantly looking for ways to improve, to deliver on what I just described. We want to add more and more capabilities that, to John Deere to, to be able to deliver this type of value. And so, one of, the, one of the moves that we've made in the last several months, again, to act on this smarter, easier, and more precise desire that we think technology is going to increasingly be able to unlock for you, is we've developed a presence in the Silicon Valley. And you heard a lot about technology this morning through Jesse's presentation. We recognize that in spades, and we think it's important that our industry and in agriculture, that we leverage the wave of technology that's originating in many cases in the Silicon Valley, in San Francisco, and, and those neighboring valley uh, towns, cities. And we want to be present so that we can bring those technology innovations into our industry. So we opened this office in May of 2017. It's located in downtown San Francisco, right off 2nd Street. I certainly encourage you, if you ever have a chance to be back in San Francisco, I understand many of you were there uh, at, at a meeting maybe a year ago, but right off 2nd Street, right off Market Street, frankly, uh, we've got a, a nice presence there, and I encourage you to stop by and take a look at some of the types of things we're working on. But this is a technology hub for us. It's a chance for us to tap into what's happening. It gives us a chance to cultivate new ideas and developments. I don't know if all of you made it out to San Francisco last meeting, but if you haven't been there before, you get there and you feel technology. Whether you're in downtown San Francisco, Sunnyvale, Palo Alto, Cupertino, Mountain View, you know, where Google and Apple uh, live and thrive, you get there and, and, and it's not uncommon to see a, a, a car that's driving itself. <laughs> in fact, the last time I was there, downtown San Francisco, I actually saw a semi truck driving itself. Didn't have a trailer on it because there's no way you could have navigated those streets, but they were demonstrating this self-driving technology. And this is the type of tech that we want to be able to bring into our machines and to you all uh, in our industry. One of the first forays or value creation opportunities we see through that type of, of, of next wave of tech is to, uh, as I talked about earlier, make our machines smarter, easier, and more precise. 
And we see, and our vision is to enable you to manage at the plant level. And so recently, several months ago, we acquired a company called Blue River Technology. This was a startup in the Silicon Valley in Sunnyvale, California, formed in 2011 from a couple of folks that saw the opportunity to bring artificial intelligence into agricultural production. And they combine computer vision and machine learning, which is just as it sounds, it's a way to allow machines to learn from inputs, in this case, camera inputs, and a trained data set to teach the machine, this is what a soybean looks like, and that's what a weed looks like. And with that training data set, given more and more data, the machine can actually learn to differentiate on its own. You know what? I haven't seen a, a, a weed that looks exactly like that, but I've seen enough weeds to know it's a weed. Or you know what? That, that cotton plant or that potato plant looks familiar, although it's got, it looks like the leaves have had some hail, but I know enough about it. I've seen enough about it. That's a, that's a, that's a cotton plant or a potato plant. I'm not going to spray that with a pesticide. Give you a bit of a deeper look at this, the sea and spray technology that Blue River, our recent acquisition, brings, is bringing to market. It's a it's first iteration. If you've seen any uh, visuals of it, it's a pull typer drawn toolbar toolbar mounted sprayer. Looks like this. Pull it behind a tractor. Look how small the the, the herbicide tank is on this sprayer. One of the reasons the herbicide tank is small is because this technology uses cameras and that machine learning algorithm to see the crop and see the weed and then target only the weed with the pesticide. So spraying only where there are weeds, not spraying the crops, not spraying bare ground, resulting in, again from this morning's presentation, a more efficient use of resources. And to give you a deeper look at how this artificial intelligence or machine learning technology works, is this is what the machine sees. Just think about us as humans in our eyes and how we process. We look on the left and we see an image. We have to distinguish, okay, which ones of these in this case are cotton plants and, and are there any weeds there? The machine is trained by a training data set, humans that went in and said, this is a weed, this is a weed, that's a plant, that's a crop, that's a weed. And that's what you see in the middle is the human has gone and drawn boxes around the good plants, the crops, then drawn red boxes around the, the bad plants, which are weeds. And then the way that gets realized in the field, you see on the right, the, sp the smart sprayer in this case saw the weed, sprayed the weed in this case with the dark material, the black material that you can see to just highlight that it applied. You can see it very precisely carved out just the space to attack the weed and leaving the crops left to, to prosper. So to summarize, I want to give you a view of how we think about how we're seeing technology across that from, from the back to the implement all the way up to the machine, enabling the manager. Then I want to give you a deep dive, a quick look at emerging technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, computer vision. These are the types of things that we're seeing in the Silicon Valley, driving, uh, driven from many of the investments in, in self-driving cars that we're all uh, interested in and watching closely. We see an opportunity to bring this to bear in agricultural crop production to drive lower inputs, better use of resources, less land impact, and ultimately driving technology that makes it easier for you all to be successful on your farms. Thank you.